You know, there, there's something outrageous that's been happening in recent days. It grieves me. It breaks my heart. I hate to see it. It is professing Christians, and in particular men who say they love the Lord, who are minimizing Donald Trump's so-called locker room talk. Oh, yeah. I understand it's not as bad as actually committing certain acts. I understand that Donald Trump was trying to say, hey, this was just kind of, you know, male talk in the locker room. We're actually doing this stuff. You have to understand it in context, although he semi-apologized for it. I mean, not as, as much as you want to repudiate it. That's one thing. It's not about condemning Donald Trump. That's not the issue. It's when Christian men say, yeah, we all get caught up in that. What? What? You're a follower of Jesus? And you get caught up talking about women in profane ways like that, in ways that I couldn't imagine possibly repeating as a follower of Jesus, let alone thinking, oh, that's just fine. What? We all get caught up with that? What? Well, it's just talk. Well, find out how how ladies feel about that talk. And how would you feel about some man talking about your daughter like that or your wife like that or your mother like that? Oh, yeah. And and how how do you think it would be if, if you were talking to Jesus in the locker room about that in vulgar, ugly, filthy, degrading terms? Again, my issue is not that I'm shocked that, that, that this tape was released with these vulgar comments from Donald Trump, because that's who I thought he was, especially in 2005. Hopefully he's changing, maybe he's even changed more. But certainly then, I, of course that's who I assumed he was. And obviously if he had changed more deeply today, he'd repudiate things even more deeply. So we're still praying for that and wanting to see that. But that's not my issue. We, we pray for him to really come to know the Lord and, and blossom as a follower of Jesus. That would be amazing. That's not the focus. The focus is the house of God. G- come on. Ephesians 5 says sexual immorality. It shouldn't even be mentioned among us. In other words, there should be no association under any circumstances with a believer and sexual immorality. And no profane or godless talk should come out of our mouths. What does Paul say in Ephesians 4.29? Let nothing corrupt, let nothing unwholesome come out of our mouths, but only that which is good for edifying. Colossians 4, let your, let your speech be seasoned with salt and full of grace. Matthew 12, we'll give account for every idle word we speak. Matthew 5, that if we look at a woman lustily in our heart, we've committed adultery in our heart. Come on, we're to put that stuff to death. That should have no more association with us than, than in our private talks. We, we talk about assassinating people. In our private talks, we, we talk about blowing ourselves up in suicide. I mean, this should be so utterly, completely foreign to us that we can't even imagine it or relate to it. And maybe some of us, before we were saved, talked like that, acted like that, were like that. But that's who we were, not who we are. So it's one thing to say, well, look, Bill Clinton did this and Hillary Clinton stands for the the killing of the unborn. Fine, fine. We'll address those issues. We address those issues all the time. That's not the issue. And my issue here is not Donald Trump. My issue is followers of Jesus. Come on. Are you going to be so devoted to his campaign? You're going to minimize it? Well, it's just talk. Just locker room talk. We all do it. No, we don't all do it. If, If we're all doing this as followers of Jesus, God help the church. Let's show purity. Let's show dignity. Let's show respect and honor for women. Let's glorify Jesus. Let it be that, that if, if people could overhear my talk and your talk after working out, after being in the gym, after being in the locker room, that they'd say, hey, those are real guys, but they love Jesus.